On today's show, are the Bucks the best elite team for the Cavs to play in the top of the Eastern Conference? Let's talk about that and more on today's show. You are Locked On Cavs, your daily Cleveland Cavaliers podcast. The music you heard on the way in is from our friends at Astral Radio, and I'm Chris Manning. That man over there is Evan Damerel. We've got a jam-packed show for you today. Cavs beat the Bucks on Friday night in Milwaukee to get to 2-2 two and two on the season. So we're going to talk about that game. We're going to touch on Cavs and how they fit against the Bucks specifically and, and perhaps who they should like to get if they have to deeper into the playoffs in segment three Cavs Clippers on Monday in Cleveland will preview that game Evan let's start with Friday's game this game was won by defense I think more than anything else this this was a really great Cavs defensive performance we can get into Mitchell and, and what he did but just a, a great defensive performance that really was energetic and feisty and competitive throughout yeah, it definitely was. This was a matchup where it certainly crystallized that Isaac Okoro has emerged as one of the best point of attack defenders in the NBA, just with the work he did on Damian Lillard. Uh, compared to just the, between the two games they had in Milwaukee, like the, the first game he made Dame work for every bucket. The second game is another indicator of that with just way less free throws compared to the first game in Milwaukee. But for me, at least, what stood out on top of just like the otherworldly defense Cleveland played, especially in the third quarter before Giannis checked back in and they strung together about four quick three pointers to close out the third is just, they won the non Giannis minutes. Like they outscored the bucks quite a bit. Like you could see that the Cavs uh, did their best to take advantage of the fact that the bucks didn't have the best player on the world on the court at times. And the Cavs just stretched open the lead quite a bit, obviously leaning on their defense, but also just allowing their offense to translate from the defense and take advantage of maybe some of the easier opportunities, whether it is on the fast break or just, you know, getting the Bucks on a mismatch or just, you know, not having Giannis Adenokounmpo on the floor uh, makes all the difference. And it felt samey at times. It's obviously not a 40 point blowout sameness, but like in terms of just like the Cavs attacking Milwaukee without their strongest player out there, it's really just smart coaching on J.B. Vickerstaff's part. And I think a mismatch they're able to exploit, especially just because, again, Giannis had another triple double in this game. Um, it's like his fourth and five games and like it, it kind of felt uh, understated, at least compared to the last game, because Cleveland just took advantage of those non Giannis minutes and also really cranked up the de- de- intensive intensity on defense um, on everybody else, not named Giannis and Kumpa on the floor. This was not a defensive performance that I totally thought they had in them to some degree because it, it, the personnel I think doesn't just add up exactly to what I would think of as putting forth this kind of their fence performance. Put some numbers on it. Bucks had an offensive rating of 98 in this game. 98 is anemic. It is in the it is below the dregs of the league for context. The worst offensive league this year, according to the Clean in the Glass, most least efficient offense at least is Portland at they're scoring 108.8. Per 100 possessions. Bucks are 10 points per 100 possessions below that. League average is 116.3. For whatever reason, you could, you know, there's a bunch of them, you could look at and just say the Cavs crushed it. Now, was the Cavs offense great in this game either? No, the Cavs was at 108.9. It was 0.1 better than the least efficient offense in the league. So this wasn't like a, a pretty game by any means. This was a, a game in the muck. But I think, Evan, to win a game like this, Even with what you said about Giannis and the way he played, and Giannis was great. Even with just kind of needing to turn it up at certain points and get different perform, get different moments, and things going correctly, and things just kind of breaking a certain way at times, and just kind of maximizing whatever moment you had. Like there's that big Karis Levert three and all that. Like that to me speaks to something about this group. It's it's nine wins in ten. It's it's continuing to just be feisty and competitive and Mm -hmm. and maximizing these moments like there's something really impressive about winning a game like this even if it's not the prettiest 
So I was either talking to this about Numak or Ty Windish when you were away from the show for a bit, but somebody in the Cavs told me like the vibes just were not great. When Mobley and Garland were ruled out, they were just off that three game slide. There's a lot more questions than answers. And like you said, like the, the tenacity and the ability to handle adversity from this group is really encouraging. But for me, on top of that, it's just like J.B. Bakerstaff has really done a wonderful job coaching this team over this 16, 17 game stretch without Garland and Mobley on the floor. Like if things went sideways in another timeline, if things aren't going as well as they are now, Bakerstaff's the first guy to go. And then the Cavs figure it out internally with whomever they promote as uh, head coach. Maybe it's Dave Yeager and Dave Yeager doesn't join Doc Rivers coaching staff. Um, but either way, um, he really like made some adjustments in this game, at least compared to the first one where maybe they, they just kind of, I don't know. It's a physicality thing. I think after the first game and this two game series that the Cavs had the Milwaukee, they said they just didn't meet Milwaukee physicality wise, like hit for hit and blow for blow. And I think for me, just like one of the indicators is like Jared Allen was picking up fouls on Giannis and Nakumpo, but they like, weren't like lazy fouls. Like he was playing Giannis very hard on defense and making Giannis really work to get bu- looks at the bucket. And like you said, like, the defensive personnel just doesn't really make sense at times just because if you're throwing guys like Dean Wade and Isaac Okoro and Jared Allen at a mix of Giannis Adenokounmpo and Brooke Lopez and like it, it was enough to w- make it work. We'll talk about this more in the upcoming segment, which is an interesting thought exercise is what I told you when I was looking over the notes. We uh, went live, but this was just an encouraging, you know, just cat uh, feather in the cap moment for jb baker staff and this team just because like they the the winning streak came to an end like it was kind of a frustrating loss just because they were showing some fight and some grit but like they weren't showing enough of maybe that edge and then they turned it up a little bit and showed that like when the chips are down or maybe when the pressure's on and the expectations are a little bit higher and things seem like they're against them they respond to it and kind of chameleon themselves to find a way to adapt and thrive um just given whatever circumstances are thrown at them that night. Last thing, Donovan Mitchell. My goodness, what he just, he, you know, 20, 12 to 27, but it was 6 to 12 from three. Got a ton of assists once again as he continues right now without Darius Garland to just kind of eat into that role. And they're not really playing a backup point guard. He has six assists, you know, five turnovers, but has 32. I mean, he was of the two all-star level guards in this game, him and Dame. He was by far the better one. Yeah, uh, I would agree. I think this is a even more impressive follow-up just in terms of efficiency. Um, the first game to me was just impressive because he picks up that fifth foul with like six minutes to go in the game, but he still keeps playing hard and keeps like attacking Milwaukee, you know, daring the refs to call that final foul on him or something like that. But this one was a really nice follow-up. It's a lot more efficient. He, again, floated the triple-double. I think he's handled the responsibility of being Cleveland's primary ball handler and point guard very well. Obviously, like you said, like Craig Porter Jr. has been faced out of the rotation in favor of Sam Merrill right now because of the shooting Merrill gives. And, I mean, you should because Merrill's red hot as well, too. You don't want to let him cool off while sitting on the bench. But, um, yeah, Mitchell has just been really, really good. And, hey, you said he was the better player on the floor. And if you look at how the NBA all-star voting went, um, Damian Lillard and Donovan Mitchell's peers agree. Like they ranked Mitchell much higher than Dame in terms of just like all-star voting. So nothing really big about it. I'm, Donovan will likely be named a reserve at this point, but this was a fun matchup between those two. And yeah, Donovan definitely stood out compared to Damian Lillard both nights. Up after this, are the Bucks among the Celtics, the Sixers, among the teams we think of as the, the East top three right now, are the Bucks' ma- best matchup for the Cavs? And how do the Cavs ultimately, do we think, match up against the Bucks now that their four-game series in this regular season is done and they're at 2-2? Two and two. We'll talk about that after this. Hold on. Today's episode is brought to you by eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. What brings home the winning trophy is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up with peak performance. Two peak performance. From superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or 
your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die live at ebaymotors.com. That is eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay Guaranteed Fit is only available to U.S. customers. Today's episode is also brought to you by FanDuel, the official sports book of Locked On. The NFL playoffs are obviously ongoing. There's a ton going on right now. And happy Super Bowl to all who celebrate from FanDuel, America's number one sports book. If you're like me, Super Bowl Sunday is all about scoring the best seat on the couch, grabbing your favorite football snacks, and placing some super bets. FanDuel has so many ways to end your season with a W or two or three. Not only can you bet on who will win a who will win Super Bowl 58, but FanDuel also has bets for which player who will score a touchdown, how many points will be scored, and so much more. I personally also, you know, I'm keeping an eye on uh, the, the Gronk the Gronk bit. I kind of would also like to see John Cena in that, based on that commercial kick a field goal. Just saying. New customers join today, and you'll get $200 in bonus bets if your first bet of five dollars or more wins just visit fanduel.com slash locked on to sign up that is fanduel.com slash locked on make every moment more with fanduel an official sports book of the nfl evan let me pause it this to you yeah what what's up you know when he's not um wearing jorts and a t in a hat and isn't dressed as uh Cleveland, Ohio native, the Parma, Ohio native, the Pacific, the Miz called him dressed like a Teletubby. You can't see him. But when he's dressed like a Teletubby and he goes like this, then you can't, then you can't see him. That's how it works. Okay. 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 And thank you for the clarity. I appreciate Fan, it. But... FanDuel, FanDuel, does, when FanDuel gives John Cena money, you can also see him. That's, I guess, one of the powers of, of FanDuel. That, that's, that's nice. For them. Okay. All right. Let me pause it to you this way. East standings right now, the top three is Boston, who I think is the best team in the conference. Bucks are second, and the Sixers are third. Sixers mm-hmm. a little bit closer to the Knicks and the Cavs right now. They're a game up on the Knicks and a game and a half up on Cleveland. So maybe we're just headed to Cavs-Knicks round two. Maybe. But, Evan, if I was going to pause it to you this way. Yeah, both. If, That'd, if be you think, That'd be a bloodbath. That'd be a bloodbath. The, two, the, like, most efficient, two of the like, most efficient teams in net rating <laughs> going blow to blow with each other right now would be uh, not good for the health of some Cavs fans out there. Or Knicks fans, maybe. Yeah, Knicks are coming on looking really good. 8-2 uh, and two in their last 10. Cavs are 9-1. and one. Two of the hotter, I mean, frankly, just two of the hotter, better teams in the league right now. But if I was looking at that top three, I think if I were Cleveland, the one I would feel most... I would be most interested in facing if I had to in the playoffs. Would I think be the Bucks? I think I am there. I don't know if I. F- I it's not Boston. I'll tell you that. And the Cavs uh-huh. might just be in their Boston side of the bracket anyway. But Philly with Embiid and with Maxi and the way they play. If Embiid is healthy and doing what he does, and in one year he's just going to go into the playoffs and be what he has been in the regular season. That team is just a nightmare, and the Bucks just feel like they're going to have some issues. I don't, I don't, I Doc, I think is going to be much better at managing personalities there. Maybe not the greatest tactician. I think the Bucks are the team that, if I'm Cleveland, I, I think that's the team that I would want if I had to play one of those three teams in, let's say, like the second round of the playoffs. So it's tricky um, because we've never seen the Cavs with Darius Garland and Evan Mobley once the season against Milwaukee, nor have we seen them with uh, facing Doc Rivers coaching the team. Um, I think there are a lot of variables at play, but I agree just like based off how these last two games went, or maybe the last three, including um, not last Wednesday, but the following the Wednesday before that. um, Like, yeah, I think you can feel a little bit encouraged just based on those returns and results, but it's also the playoffs are a completely different piece. I think, you know, the uh, Cavs are stylistically better matched up against the Bucks because the Bucks like to play a little bit slower. They're longer, a lot longer than the two. They are much more worse off defensively without their, without Drew Holiday out there compared to um, Damian Lillard being out there now. And it can be a little tough in that aspect of, 
uh, how you can figure out like just how this whole thing works out but um yeah i think the bucks would be an interesting matchup for sure like i think it'd be a more one of the more fun ones if the Cavs wanted to make like a legitimate like run to the eastern conference finals i think that's a more viable path but like to me like philly still could be like a guy, a team that could um, the Cavs could match up well against. That's a team they've only played once this year, so we don't really know. But like, yeah, Boston's the team you would likely want to avoid right now because the Cavs are 0-2 against them. They don't play them again until March, so obviously we'll see how they feel or how they look comparatively. But yeah, like right now, just based on what we know and everything, um, yeah, I, I feel like the Cavs should feel pretty good about their chances against um, Milwaukee compared to the rest of the field. If you had to rank them, how would you rank them? Um, in terms of just like most desirable to least desirable. Yeah. Okay. Um, Milwaukee one, Philly two, Boston three, and I'll put Miami in this mix too, just because the, the heat are zombies and they always will be. Um, I think they are four for me and just cause Eric Spolster is a good coach. And again, the heat are just the undead they'll find a way to sneak their way into the second round if they can yeah i think above i well i miami is kind of its own like lurking monster and i always just just, want to have them in the mix because they uh what is dead may never die is the miami heat actual ethos yeah i think i think the part for the for the sake of like the structure of this the top th- like looking at just like the top three, Boston is like just in its own tier. That's just the best. That's, yeah. that's either the best team in the league or second best behind Denver to me. I think they're better Bucks than Denver just, right now. Yeah, but that's just, just personal just, preference. Yeah, I think you're right. I just think also like Denver won the title last year, and it's Jokic and like Denver just won in Boston, first team all year, only team all year to beat Boston in Boston. So like, there's something to. Nuggets are just really good. That they're just good. they're gonna be there in some way, shape, or capacity in the conference finals or the finals again, and could win it all again. That's like very, very possible. They're this Boston, but in for in the East, they're in their own tier. Wing stuff, all the different things you could look at that you know, that's the issue. Bucks and Sixers are not super far apart. I. But I think I have the I would the Bucks would be first, which feels crazy to say because they have Giannis and Dame. Mm-hmm. You we, you could that could go a very certain way and be tough. And then Philly, and then Boston. Miami is just like in its own thing. It, it the, like them and I mean if you if if you go like lower, it's like the Knicks are would be a really hard matchup for the Cavs. We saw that last year, and there's there's some things Cleveland would have a lot to prove in that series. The Heat would be that. I mean, I I think there's there's a there, whatever happens here. I think ultimately. There's going to be some hard as heck playoff matchups. Like, it's coming. Like, whatever is coming here is coming in. Let's we'll end on this. What, it's not all up to them, obviously. The, the Knicks would need to struggle. The Sixers or the Bucks would need to take a big step back. But how, how advantageous do you think it would be for Cleveland, if you're kind of building this out, to maybe get to the three seed and, and get one of those two teams? Like, it theoretically, just have a slightly different path than where they kind of seem to be slotted in at four or five right now. Like, how valuable do you think that would be if they could actually push for that? I think pushing for the three seed would be ideal because, like you said, it, it feels like they are on a collision course with New York again for a first-round rematch, and... Just with how well the Knicks have been playing post OG and Anobi trade, and who knows what else they're going to do with the come trade deadline time, um, you maybe want to kind of just avoid that monster for as long as you can if you are the Cavs. And so, if you're able to sneak into that three spot and avoid like that four or five toss up, and also maybe have the luxury of a possible upset happening um, in one of the rounds and maybe you get a little bit of more of a home court quote unquote advantage in the second round or a more favorable matchup. But I think you're within striking distance of three. Um, we talked about this at the beginning of the season. They got the best record in the league, which certainly feels out of reach just with how well Boston's played this year. Um, like that is their like kind of clear path to uh running the table in the Eastern Conference. But again, it's all matchup-based, of course. But um, 
at least to me, I, I feel like it's uh, probably the better path to get three versus four right now. But if it ends up being a four or five matchup, it's just going to be much, much more of a grind for Cleveland. And I think they are showing some tenacity where they are comfortable with grinding it out with some teams. Yeah, I I think three if you could get it would be a huge boon if you want any hope of making a, a deeper run that is the place in the standings that i think unlocks more but we'll talk after this break about a, another Cavs big Cavs game Cavs clippers clippers also i think one of the best teams in the league we'll talk about that preview that game after this Today's episode is brought to you by Quiz. Today, we're going to have some fun and test your locked on Cavs knowledge. We're really Cavs knowledge. We have, there are questions that they have on the Quiz app, like what player holds the, the record for most points scored in a single game for the Cavaliers? Or what is the nickname of the Cavaliers mascot? Quiz with three eyes, not one, not two, three, is the next generation trivia experience. It is also the world's first platform where you can earn money playing knowledge games. And for Lockdown Cavs fans, they've created the NBA quiz game where you can test your knowledge and win real cash. Play with your friends or other fans and let your knowledge shine all the way to the bank. You can play without downloading anything. Just go to app.quiz.com and start playing today. NBA quiz is the ultimate knowledge challenge for fans that live and breathe basketball. Evan, do you know the answer to the question, which player holds the, most, holds the record for most points in a single game for the Cavaliers? Oh gosh, I I think I was at this game actually. I think it, is it Donovan Mitchell? Yeah, it is Donovan Mitchell. Oh my and gosh! This, I know, shocker, big one, seventy whatever is a lot of points. Everyone's on points. A lot of scoring in the NBA last couple of years. So check Boomers out quiz. Complaining about it too. Well, they're they're not having fun. Tell, let let us know if you play this. We'd love to hear your stories. Maybe we'll hop on there as well. So go to app.quiz.com to test your knowledge and win cash today. That is quiz with three eyes, just like the three-pointer. Play now, showcase your skills, and take home cash prizes. App.quiz.com, where fans become champions. Cavs Clippers Monday night in Cleveland. Evan, what's your number one thing you are looking for in this game? What are you most excited to see for Cavs Clippers? I know Kawhi Leonard is a step slow uh, compared to what he was. Maybe he's not the same player that he once was, but him along with Paul George and James Harden, like we, we talk about all these tests the Cavs have been dealing with lately, like Milwaukee being the latest one with Giannis out there. But like this one is much of a more of a multi-layered beast because like you have three dudes that really thrive on the perimeter, Harden especially, and then you have like Westbrook who's played very well off the bench for the Clippers as well thriving too like how do the Cavs respond to this and also like who is or is not available like does Darius Garland maybe give this a shot or a go after not traveling with the team to excuse me um uh keep focusing on his recovery to get back to the floor um just perhaps Evan Mobley become like a game time decision because the reporting the ethos is is he could be back as early as this week or is this just gonna be another game where the Cavs are undermanned and seemingly like outgunned in this one and they find a way to scrap and claw but like this is gonna be one of the more difficult I wanna say matchups the Cavs have dealt with so far just because like the the triple headed monster that is Harden George and Leonard is really tough and then you have Westbrook coming off the bench too which makes it even harder. Kawhi, if people haven't been watching or, or at least looking at box scores, is having like an unbelievable season. He's played, he's playing 35 minutes a game, shooting a career best 52.5% from the field. He's shooting 44.8% from three, which would be a career best on five attempts per game. He's averaging tw- nearly 24 a game. He's averaging six boards. He is averaging th- nearly four assists a game. He's averaging nearly two steals a game. Kawhi has been an all-star level guy. He has been utterly unbelievable. He has not maybe gotten the fanfare, and I think there's always going to be trepidation with him about his health, but this guy is playing, I think, like pretty close to like an apex Kawhi. Like, it is kind of unbelievable. And I think this Clippers team is just really good. Like, I am skeptical of them because of the health, because of, of James Harden. 
Um, but they're the second in the league. In, they're third in the league in net rating. Boston, Oklahoma City, the only two teams in the league with better net ratings. They're second in offense. They're eighth in defense. Last two weeks, they are first in offense. They're third in point differential, and they're eighth in defense. This is just flat out the best team the Cavs have played, I think, since Boston. This is just a better team, full stop, than Milwaukee. This is a this is a massive, massive test. And we're recording this early on Sunday, so we don't have injury reports as of yet. Mm-hmm. We don't know if Darius Garland's listed a certain way or Evan Mobley is listed a certain way. But, Evan, to me, the, the intrigue of this game is just this is the best team the Cavs have played in some time, the team going through the least amount of strife that they've played in some time. This is a this is a massive, massive test for a team that has been, you know, great, one nine out of ten. But this is this is a step up from even the Bucks of the world and the Atlantas and the Chicago's and the Brooklyn's and, and the Wizards. Yeah, and for context, like the Clippers are twenty seven and twelve with James Harden. They were three and two treading water up into that point and that is like you said there's not a lot of strife a lot of trepidations going on with the clippers it's just kind of the, the quietness has gone or the loudness that comes to james harden has gone away because harden's happy for the time being but yeah this is the toughest match of the Cavs have had up to this point they, they definitely get a bit of a palate cleanser before they go play minnesota at the end of this upcoming week uh against the pistons on wednesday but injury report notwithstanding like you can't ride your hope on Darius Garland and Evan Mobley being back out there to give you a shot against the Clippers if you're the Cavs. Like, matchup-wise, you're going to see a heavy dose of, I think, Isaac Okoro minutes on uh, James Harden. I wonder if Dean Wade kind of gets thrown at, like, Paul George at times. Like, they used him on Chris Middleton. Obviously, not the same level of player, but still, like, there's some defensive matchups you could do there. And also, like, how do you defend Kawhi at the four? Like, is Jared Allen comfortable defending a small forward playing power forward at that spot like Giannis is more of a power forward slash center who it's easier for Allen to defend but like how how do you kind of defend all these perimeter threat guys because the Cavs are a little limited at that spot like maybe Donovan Mitchell Max Struess and others step up too just because like they play hard or Mitchell uses his god-given wingspan but it's going to be an interesting matchup but like I really am going to watch to see like how does Jamie Bickerstaff utilize Isaac Okoro in this one and I feel like it's going to be pretty much exclusively on James Hart. Yeah, I, I would suspect it, it would be, and we'll see how the rest of it goes. Cavs next five games. Clippers home on Monday, home versus the Pistons on Wednesday, at Memphis on Thursday in a TNT game, which is probably... Which Actually, is no, it's no longer a TNT game. It's on Valley Sports. Oh, it's, okay, it's been it got moved. That's, that's, good, that's good for the world. Um, so this is TNT at the ESPN schedule I'm looking at. Spurs on Saturday, and then the Kings at home next monday so interesting slate of five games coming the apex the clippers you get the pistons after that but clippers my, my, monday, my no bad line on for, confusing memphis yeah. for minnesota by the way everyone yeah you know just two very similar cities no not at all and also just two very that, different that, basketball teams one one you know that got rocked by injuries and one that um got rocked by victor Wembanyama hitting him with a sham god <laughs> Yeah, the the uh, when I said similar cities, that was that was sarcasm. Uh, no, yeah, that wasn't serious. Yeah, it's fine. It's okay. All right, we're gonna end there. I'm Chris Manning. That is Evan Damrell. Thanks going to Jake Stevens as always. Evan will have a some version of your recap of Cavs Clippers up. I will going to be on the road for a day, but I'll be back Wednesday and back the rest of the week, or more locked on Cavs Wednesday. We're gonna do. Position by position. So guards, wings, bigs. Which group do the Cavs actually need to trade for? Come back for that. Come back for all things here on Lockdown Cavs. Be well. Have a great rest of your Monday. 